When I was six years old, it's my first recollection of the Holocaust because I was forced to wear a yellow star. I was branded. I was differentiated. I was getting beaten up by kids because I was a Jew. My family went through some terrible experiences. By the time the war ended, most of us didn't know whether anyone else in the family was alive. Only my mother and I were together. Miraculously, every single member of my immediate family survived. I am the son of survivors of the Holocaust, Schindler Juden, Schindler Jews from Krakow, Poland. I've always been aware of my parents' background and history um, and the legacy that I've taken from that is to be aware always of how lucky and how miraculous my existence has been. I know that they um, survived terrible things, but they survived miraculous things. And uh, what I've tried to do for myself, for my children, for my grandkids, is to teach them the appreciation uh, of life, the appreciation of others, um, and to value um, whatever comes their way. We arrived in Auschwitz and been interviewed. The first interview was with Mengele. He told my brother that he can go with the children and have a good time there uh, while I have to go back to work. The next day, once I was assigned to one of the barracks, uh, the young man there asked me how I got here. So I said, I got here with my brother. And my brother is now with the children having uh, a little easier time than I'm going to have. So they left at me and said, look out the window. You see the smoke from the other building there nearby? You see, that's where your brother is now. What? I said, yeah, he's being burned uh, by in our oven. So. I turned to them and said, this couldn't be possible. I said, the German nation, the most civilized nation on this planet, would do a thing like that? It would be unbelievable. I couldn't comprehend that this can happen. And, and once I stayed there another few weeks, I realized that they were telling the truth. About 20 years ago, the Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center developed a group called the Speakers Bureau, which is comprised of Holocaust survivors and liberators. They go into the schools to speak to students as well as to adults about their personal experiences during the Holocaust. They're getting older now. Many of them are not able to drive. They're not able to remember as accurately as they used to. And quite frankly, they're getting on in years, they're getting very sick, and one by one, we're beginning to lose them. 
So their children and their grandchildren are feeling the tremendous burden to pick up where they left off and go into the schools and continue to tell the stories, to be witnesses to the horrors of the Holocaust. I um, first found out that uh, about the Holocaust when I was seven years old in a Orthodox yeshiva school. Uh, in second grade, uh, the, the class was shown a, a, a film called Night and Fog. So I, I got home that night and asked him about his tattoo and asked him what happened and he did tell me briefly. So the rest of my life became making sense of what happened and it, it never left me. I just, um, it, it, it follows me wherever I go. It, it's part of my life. I, I feel like I've done well despite having that history. They feel the burden of telling their parents and their grandparents' story. Some of the second generation people have told me that they have nightmares even though their parents did not have nightmares. Some have told me that they have nightmares because their parents had nightmares. I had lots of rescue dreams. I still do. I had one recently, maybe because this was coming up, where I'm in the camps and I'm, I'm freeing everybody, sort of like Rambo, where I start shooting all the Nazis and, you know, <laughs> and I'm the hero and, and liberate the camp and so liberate my dad. Uh, and um, it, it does, it, there is a weight that, that you, uh, a burden that I carry, but I've integrated it into the rest of my life. I still have a lot of trouble, just like my dad, processing how, how, how anybody can reduce themselves to such bestial behavior that it, it's incomprehensible, really, that the anecdotes that continue to come out of the Holocaust and those times uh, just really are, are really telling about the, the evil that lurks within mankind, that uh, if, whether, whether every human being is possible to sink the, that low, I, I don't know, I would like to think not. Uh, I was born in Vilna, Poland in 1939, just as the war broke out in Eastern Europe. Uh, I was separated uh, from my twin brother and my immediate family. Uh, ultimately, we were reunited. Uh, the problem is that it's very difficult for me to piece all the events since uh, we, my parents were reluctant to share our background. I always vowed that I would share this experience with my grandchildren. Uh, following their bar and bat mitzvah, we made a trip to Eastern Europe so they could understand the impact of the Holocaust and what the significance was. By the third grade, I had learned about the Holocaust. My uh, grandfather had told me bits and pieces of what he could remember about when he was in Poland. I, he wasn't until he took me and my family to Eastern Europe to visit the concentration camps that I really got to experience what it actually was like in the camps. The thing that struck me the most by far was in the Camp Majdanek. In the middle, there's a big dome. And as we're leaving, we walk out and we go up to the dome and inside is a two-ton pile of human ash. And looking at that is just something, it's a feeling you, you can't describe. Like it, it overcame me. And it's, it's something I'll never forget. After going on this trip, I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure survivor stories are documented and everybody hears them because it's, we don't have a lot of time left with the survivors. Over the years I've heard my grandfather tell his story many times now and he always ends by talking about how he tells his story because it's his responsibility to pass it on to the next generation and to keep telling the stories because there's not always going to be somebody there to tell it and I always really took that to heart and when I was 18, I went to Poland and I went to the concentration camps to see, to experience what was there and what was left. And um, one of the days in Auschwitz, there's all these rooms filled with containers of belongings that were left behind by the Jews. And there's a huge case, just this 
case in the wall of all the suitcases that were left behind and there's names on them because they wrote their names on it because they had no idea that it, where it was going or what was going to happen and it's what they put their belongings into and I'm walking around in this room and out of the corner of my eye I see a suitcase that has my sister's name on it and I it took me like five minutes to stand there and stare at it and tell myself it wasn't it wasn't my sister and And uh, like that's why I, I mean that's why I went because it's so important to see that this can happen. It can happen again and that's why it's important to tell this. <laughs> Thank you.